The last thing that we have time to look in detail at today is the easiest way possible to publish your own website and content. I know a lot of you think that web publishing is either beyond your ability or you've got nothing worth sharing on a website. Well, I think I might just change your mind about publishing your own websites when you see how easy it is using a Mac. Right within your .Mac account, you can publish simple websites just by clicking on Home Page, and in here is a little wizard that allows us to create very simple websites, which are ideal for doing things like sharing photos. Now, if you want a more sophisticated website, then we're going to use an application called iWeb. iWeb is one of the iLife applications which ship for free with every Mac. And if you've watched the show before, you know I'm a big fan of iLife applications. iLife applications manage all of our media, our rich media life. Things like our music using iTunes, our photos, which are in iPhoto. iLife also includes iMovie HD, which allows us to edit and create our own movies. And iDVD, which allows us to publish those movies onto a DVD, which we can play back in regular old DVD players. It also includes GarageBand, that allows us to make our own music or make our own podcasts. And the star of this segment, iWeb. Now, iWeb allows us to create our own websites for personal use, for school, for business, for any need at all, but it makes it very, very simple. This is a template and placeholder driven application. Let me show you how you go about creating your own website. Now, I think for our example today, my son just got back from Portugal, got some great pictures from Portugal, so I thought, let's use Portugal as a basis for our website or his trip to Portugal. So under the file menu, I'm going to choose new site. As soon as I choose that, a wizard pops up that allows me to choose from all of these different templates. And I'm going to choose a look that I like. So we see here there's a whole different series of templates that give different feelings. Now, I like this one here, which is designed for travel. So once I've selected that, then we have our different pages that we can start with. Because a website is not just a single page, but there's different types of information that we want to share on a website, they've included a welcome page, an about me page, photo pages, movie pages if we want to upload our own movies, a blog page, which we will talk about in a few moments, a podcast page, and finally a blank page, I guess if you've got nothing to say at all or if you want to make up your own style of page. How we start is just select the page that you want to begin your website with, that you want to be your landing page or your home page within your website. Choose that and iWeb starts the process. Now, iWeb takes care of all of the HTML code and all of the putting the files in the proper folders and preparing it all to upload to the Internet for you so that all you have to concern yourself with is the content that goes on the page. Content on the page, I'm good at. All of the programming in the background, I'm not so good at that, so I'll let the Mac take care of that for me. Now, what we can do here now is we can go in and we can start to change the text and the photos on the page. Remember how I said this was a placeholder and template driven? We well, see the template. The placeholders are the text and the photos that are on the page. This gives us a, a suggestion of where we should put our information. So I'm going to call this Portugal 2006. And then that changes the text on the page. And now I'm going to start changing the photos to my photos. And for that, I'm going to go into iPhoto. And I'm going to select some of the photos that Luke took while in Portugal. And I can either just drag them over and drop them. Or if I want, I can select the photo right within iPhoto, copy it, go into iWeb, and I can paste it in. Now, you notice something really interesting has happened here, is it hasn't just pasted the photo up straight. It's added all the different attributes to both the text and the photos that was originally there in the placeholder. So in this case here, it put the photo at a slight angle, and it put the fancy border around it. So all of the design work has been taken care of. We're just concerned with the content that goes within it. And we would go through now, and we would continue to fill in and replace the placeholders with our own content. Once we've finished our first page, it's time to add our second page. Click on the plus button down here in the bottom, and that brings up our template again to allow us to choose which templates we want. I'm going to choose a photo page here and choose that. And since they don't know how many photos we want, they've done something really interesting here. They've made the placeholder very dynamic. So now I can start to drag in the photos that I have, and as I drag in photos, it automatically scales and adjusts the size of the page to allow for these different photos. So if you take a look now here at the page, you can see that it's actually brought in more photos than the original three that were there, and it's still interactive. It allows me to move things around and to set up the page how I want best and how it's going to look best for me. It allows me to concentrate on the content and not worry about the programming in the background. Once this is all done, it'll take all of these photos, put them in a proper photos folder, and then upload them to the internet for me for my website. Want to add one more page? 
In this page, I want to be dynamic. I want to add a blog page. We're going to talk about podcasting later on in the season. Podcasting is where we record our own opinion, where we record our thoughts, where we record some sort of an audio file and then upload it to the internet and allow people to listen to it either on their computer or on a podcast. A blog similar, but instead of it being an audio file, it's a text file. It's like an online journal. So I'm going to create a blog, and now the template looks slightly different because blogs have ongoing information being published into them constantly. So I can change the placeholder again information. Instead of our trip to Tuscany, I can call this day one. And so it's our first day in Portugal. And now it will change the information within the blog to reflect the content that I'm putting in it. And as I add new entries day after day, those become available. Once I publish this up to the internet, all of my friends and family, instead of me getting a, sending an email to them each day, telling them what's happening in Portugal, they can go and just visit my blog. And I can do things like adding photos and adding text, adding other area things to the blog so that I can make it very rich and very interesting for them. And again, all of this structure is taken care of by iWeb for me. Once this is all done, I publish this up to the internet. Let me show you under the file menu my choices there. I can either publish it to my .Mac account, which is, I think, the smartest way to do things, let them take care of everything, or I can also publish it to a folder if I have another web server that I can use to upload my website to. Once it's all done, the site gets uploaded to the internet, and in this case, it would be stored on my iDisk, and all of the structure is added. I want to show it to you on the web here. This is actually my folder up on my iDisk, and you can see that it's done all of the structure for my website and put everything in its proper place, so I haven't had to worry about any of the structure behind it. I've only worried about the content within the site. Publishing on the web should be this easy. If you've got something to share, something to say, you should be concerned with the message, with the content, not necessarily with the technology. iWeb makes web publishing easy. It makes web publishing approachable. The integration of .Mac and iWeb it's simply superb.